a large number of the jokes in most of our popular magazines where they print cartoons have to do with father as a clown, whereas mom has to handle the real problems of the family and is, is therefore the realist in the picture. Dad is a clown. Why? Because he goes away to a mysterious place called the office or the factory, in which the family as such have no part and no real interest. He brings back a thing called money, and they want more of it, see, back at home. They don't care how you get it, just so long as you bring it back, because they're not interested in what you as a man do. And when you come back from the various rat races in which you are engaged making money, you are supposed to be a good pal to the children. Play with them, look after your wife, and appreciate what she's done all during the day. But they have no interest in what you do. They couldn't care less. And furthermore, you as a father, you as a mother, are expected to live for your children. Americans have an enormous sense of guilt because they have not done right by their children. And they're trying more and more to do right by their children. The difficulty is that the family as an institution is not surviving in industrial culture. It is an institution designed for an agrarian culture. It's fascinating to notice today the transition from agrarian to industrial culture in a country like Japan where it's been extremely rapid. Let's take the craft of carpentry in Japan. The Japanese have been some of the best carpenters in the world. Absolutely marvelous. Knowing how to make the most complex joinery constructions without even using a blueprint. Doing it by feel and by eye. In order to train a person to do this kind of carpentry, he has to begin to learn when he's seven years old. But as it is now, because Japan has transferred to being an industrial culture, you may not bring up your child in your profession as a carpenter. You have to send the child to school where it can learn to be an insurance salesman. The child gets through school, goes through high school. When the child gets out, it's not interested in carpentry, it's interested in girls. Has to fool around with that for a while and then get married and then begin to learn the carpenter's trade and it's too late to be anything but somebody who follows a blueprint. Therefore, this marvelous craft, which the Japanese cultivated for centuries, is being lost. For what? The man in the family has to go away and earn a living that has absolutely no relation to his living relationship with his wife and his children. And therefore, naturally, he's regarded as a clown. When he comes home, he's not really a very good pal to his children, because the children would find a real relationship with their father in joining in his work with him. Every little child wants to join in his parents' work. They go into the kitchen. They would much rather play with the pots and pans than anything else. They want to help. They naturally want to join in, but they cannot. And therefore, instead of being allowed to join in with the real work of their parents, they are given propitiatory objects called toys. You may have a toy stove. You may have toys, dolls, and pretend that they're babies. You may not actually look after the baby because there might be an accident. And the children are not satisfied with this. They are absolutely frustrated with it because all these toys fall apart in a hurry. They don't really work. They don't do what's expected of them. They are not real. And the child knows they're not real. And so as the whole educational process continues, they are educated for unreality, for non-entity. So this is what we do. We send a child into kindergarten, make him literate more or less, run, spot, run. And then the, the inducement is, if you, if you learn this, you'll get into first grade. Wowee, if you do well there, you'll get into second grade. And so, some of the kind of a come on. See? You'll go through the step-by-step -step educational process. There's going to be a big event. When you get out of grade school, you go to high school. It's, 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 the pace is coming on now, see? And uh, you're going to get 
step by step up through high school because there's something at the end of the line. You haven't got it yet. There's a thing coming. Go to college. Whew. Made it that far. And step by step you go on, then you get to graduate school. But if you if you don't get into graduate school so that you can just stay in the academic scheme of things, you go into business. That's getting out into the world. That's graduation. See, now you're really, you're an adult. But then the first thing is you get into a sales meeting. What they say is, make that quota. And if you do, they're going to give you a higher quota. And that thing is at the end of the line, it's there, and all the advertisements say, well, by the time you earn this and get that, you'll be able to have the right kind of car, the right kind of speedboat, the right kind of track lot, the right kind of clothes, and everything, the right kind of drinks. And uh, you, you'll be there. And uh, finally, you, you work along at this, you're earnest. And uh, about the year of 45, you end up as vice president of the company. You say, I've arrived. I'm there. But I feel vaguely cheated because I feel just the same as I always felt. I'm there, but I haven't caught up with that thing I was always promised. And suddenly an insurance man comes around and says, wait a minute, you're going to retire at 65. And we've got a program for you. So that uh, you'll, you'll be just right. When you're 65, you'll be able to drop all this business and do what you really want to do. <laughs> that time you're not interested. <laughs> prostate trouble, bad teeth. So, you you know, you end up feeling you've been cheated. And the reason was simply this. That education was regarded as the process of preparation for something which never happened. Never is going to happen. But it was you were always getting prepared for life. A real education is an entirely different thing. An education in the real sense is not preparation for life. It is actually living. It is the child participating in adult concerns. And doing it now and realizing that the point of the process in which the child is engaged is not to prepare the child for the future, but to enjoy doing the thing today. Because the whole point is that there is no point whatsoever in making plans for the future except for those people who are capable of living in the present. If you are not capable of living in the present, plans are useless. Because when those plans come to fruition, you will be incapable of enjoying that fruition. But it seems to me that the absolute point of any educational system that has any worth whatsoever is the progressive allowing of children to participate in activities that adults consider real and important. And that should begin very early. Supposing you are making money in a factory, producing something worthless and trashy, but it pays. And you justify this on the grounds that it will give you money to bring up your children to do something better than you are doing. You are fooling yourself because your child will copy you. And if you exist simply to bring up your children for something better than you have, then your children will do nothing but exist to bring up their children to do something better than they have. And they'll always be frustrated. If on the other hand, you are doing something in life, you have a vocation, a work which you're doing, which you are really interested in and which you thoroughly enjoy. And it's this that you live for and not for your children. Then your children will catch your enthusiasm and they in turn will find something that they can live for and be really interested in and in turn their children will become interested in it. You should not live for the good of your children. You should live for your own good. And then your children will learn from your example how to live. <laughs>